So in this video, we will start to learn what are the physical stimulus. So what would be the possible tool and um, so that we can pull our GDP to meet our full employment GDP uh, goals. So first of all, I have to remind, uh, refresh your memory uh, regarding a couple of the very important concepts. So first, so for the macro equilibrium, that means the combination of the price level and real output that is compatible with both aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So if you look at this figure, and so if our current aggregate demand curve is 81, and so what is my equilibrium point? So that's point A. So under point A, so under point A, you will find uh, our price level is PE, and our uh, equilibrium quant uh, 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 real GDP is QE. And so under the current situation, you will know that uh, our QE actually is smaller than our QF, which is the full employment GDP. That is our macro goal. And from the previous uh, class, we learned that so the difference between QE and QF in this case is called a recessionary GDP gap. So that is the amount by which equilibrium GDP falls uh, short of the full employment GDP. So now, for the physical stimulus, so the goal is try to close this gap, so then the QE will meet the QF. So we try to um, meet the QE to QF. So how can we achieve it? So the Keynesian's model of the adjustment process actually show not only how the economy can get into such trouble, but also sh show how it might get out. So from Keynesian's perspective, so the way out of the uh, recession, like in this scenario, is to get someone to spend more on goods and services. So the source of the new spending could come from increased government purchase or tax cut that increase consumers or uh, the business spendings. So that is what we're going to look at, what is called um, physical, uh, uh, fiscal stimulus. So for the physical stimulus, the goal is try to move in the 81 curve to the right so that we can close the QE and QF gap. So the possible uh, physical stimulus, including tax cut. So think about if the government reduced the tax cuts and then each individual or business will be able to have more disposable income. So if the people have more disposable income based, based on the multiplier effect, so they will be allowed to spend more and bring more revenue to the business. Business will be willing to produce more and the worker will get more income. And so this will generate this kind of momentum and try to uh, stimulate, the, stimulate the economy. And so the tax cuts or spending hikes. So think about the government spend more naturally will shift our AD curve to the right because every demand curve is including consumption, investment, government purchase, and net export. So if government spending more, the AD curve will definitely shift to the right. So if government will purchasing more product, it's from the either labor market or the business is naturally increased um, consumer and business income, disposable income. So then they will be able to spend more. And so you can see, uh, to understand the physical stimulus, the first you need to know what is the goal. So the goal to implementing the physical st uh, stimulus is try to shift the AD curve to the right. And the second is, um, when we are talking about physical stimulus, you have to understand the effect of the fiscal stimulus will be broader than how much the government really uh, did because the multiplier effect. And so the general strategy is very clear after explained. However, the scope of the desired intervention is not. Because at this point, it's basically you said, oh, I just tried to kind of like review what we already learned. So, but if you really try to understand the fiscal stimulus, and you actually need to ask the two more questions. How much do we want to shift the AD curve to the right so that we can close this um, receptionary GDP gap? And the second, how can we induce the desired shift? So we know we're gonna shift, uh, hopefully, uh, to close this gap. And the second is what kind of so how much policy we need to 
um, implement so that this gap really can be closed. So that's why in the ne uh, next we will discuss is to understand aggregate demand shortfall so that we can understand how can we include the desired shift. So how large uh, a shift? So if there is a receptioner GDP gap of 400, 400, billion, 400 um, billion, just like what you saw on the uh, graph. So why not just increase the aggregate demand by the size of the GDP gap? So which means um, you can see on the chart, so the 81 and 82, and so if we know the gap is um, 400 billion, so if we are only uh, stimuli the economy by 400 billion. So what you see is our 81 will shift to the 82. So now my question is, under the 82, what is the equilibrium point? So obviously the equilibrium point is C. So the price level rise up. And the most important is unfortunately under C, uh, the Q will be between QE and QF. So which means we still cannot achieve our um, full-time employment GDP, so it's not good enough. So that's the question we're going to ask, how large a shift? So definitely it's not just try to increase reception, try to uh, increase 400 billion in this case. So then how much? So the right word shift of the aggregate demand that is equal to the GDP gap will leave the economy short of the full employment, as I just explained it here. And so we understand that when you are shifting the AD curve, you have to understand the price level actually will goes up. So if the price level will goes up and the, uh, the market will adjust to it, and then they will produce less. So that's why you can see if we only give 400 billion, we will not be able to achieve our macro uh, goals. So the this naive, uh, uh, the Keynesian model, so King, uh, Keynes thought that fiscal policy might work, but achieving full employment without price increases would happen only if the aggregate supply curve were horizontal. So which means if our AS curve is horizontal, then go ahead and just give the, uh, the receptionary uh, GDP gap amount of the stimulus. But the fact is the AD curve is not, it's go upward. And go up with means if you give that stimulus, you cannot avoid that uh, to understand when the AD curve shift, the price level will go up, which will reduce the effect of the, um, sh uh, the stimulus. So then what should we do? So that is called the aggregate demand shortfall. So as long as the aggregate supply curve shift uh, slope upwards, so we must increase AD by more than the size of the GDP gap to achieve full employment. So if you look at it on these charts, and what we see is, instead of moving the 81 to 82, we actually should move 82, 81 to 83. So you can see under the 83, the equilibrium point is D. So on the equilibrium D, and the corresponding uh, horizontal value is QF. So that is when we literally close this receptionary gap. So that is increasing by AD shortfall amount. So the AD shortfall is the amount of the additional aggregate demand needed to achieve full employment after allowing for price level changes. And so uh, the horizontal distance between point A and the point E, point A and the point E here, uh, measure the aggregated demand shortfall. So the aggregate demand shortfall is a fiscal target. So the fiscal target is not receptionary GDP gap. Actually, it is the aggregate demand shortfall. Uh, the reason is because when you are shifting the AD curve, you have to understand our price level will also adjust as well. So government usually tend to spend more than the receptionary GDP cap in order to close this receptionary GDP gap. And so, after we understand this macro goal, and then the next job we need to look at is, so in terms of the government spending, in terms of the taxation and income transfer, so by how much the government should do so that uh, we will be able to close this gap. In another way, in another term, how can we uh, calculate 
the AD short for? How can we calculate AD short for? So first we will focus on uh, government spending, and then we're going to look at uh, the tax cut, and then lastly we'll look at uh, the income transfer.